Hey y'all, I'm Emily. Before we dive into my tale, hit that like and subscribe button for more. Here we go. In our small, rented home, the aroma of fresh coffee filled the air. I poured a cup for my husband, Tom, who was already up, getting ready for his shift at the local factory. Morning, Em. Tom greeted me with his usual warm smile. Ready for another day? Always am, I replied, handing him his coffee. Our lives were simple, hardworking, and full of love. We made just enough to get by, but we never let the struggles dampen our spirits. In the next room, my mother hummed an old tune, knitting in her favorite chair. She'd been living with us since my sister Sarah got married and forgot her roots. Sarah's marriage to Richard, a wealthy businessman, changed her. She lived in a mansion now, surrounded by luxuries we could hardly imagine. But along with those luxuries came a sense of arrogance. She looked down upon our modest life, barely acknowledging our mother, let alone visiting her. As I set the breakfast table, Tom joined me. You know, Em, we might not have much, but we've got something money can't buy. I smiled, knowing exactly what he meant. Our love, our unity, our resilience. These were our true riches. That day, as I headed to my job at the local diner, I couldn't help but think about Sarah. Despite our differing paths, she was still my sister. But the distance between us grew with each passing day, both physically and emotionally. I served coffee and pie, exchanging smiles and small talk with regulars. It was during one of these shifts that I overheard a customer talking about Sarah. Yeah, Sarah's living the high life, but heard she's been having a tough time lately, the customer whispered to his friend. I felt a pang in my heart. Despite everything, she was still family. But as I returned home that evening, to the laughter and warmth of my small family, I knew where I belonged. We might not have been rich in money, but we were wealthy in ways that mattered most. In the coziness of our little home, Tom and I were buzzing with excitement. Our family was about to double. We were expecting twins. Life was looking up, but little did I know. It was about to take a dramatic turn. The day started like any other. Mom was knitting, lost in her thoughts. And I was flipping through a baby magazine when my phone buzzed. It was a text from Sarah. Emily, we need to talk. It's important, her message read. Curious and a bit cautious, I replied, Sure, Sarah. What's up? Can we meet? At my place. I hesitated, but agreed. It had been ages since we last spoke properly. Maybe she wanted to mend fences, I thought. How wrong I was. At Sarah's mansion, the contrast to our simple home was stark. As I walked through her opulent living room, I saw her sitting, her face a mix of emotions. Emily, you know I can't have children, Sarah started her voice trembling. But I've been thinking, what if I could still be a mother? I nodded, unsure where this was leading. Here's my proposition. Let me adopt one of your twins. I'll pay you generously. I was stunned, disbelief washing over me. Sarah, you can't be serious. They are my children. It's a win-win, Emily. Think of the life you could give them, and yourself. I stood up, my heart pounding. No, Sarah, this conversation is over. As I turned to leave, Sarah's demeanor changed. You're making a mistake, Emily. In a flash, she lunged at me, her hand striking my stomach. The pain was immediate, and I screamed, staggering back. Sarah, what have you done? I cried, clutching my belly. In a haze of pain and shock, I managed to get out of the house. I called the police, gasping for breath. Please, help me, my sister. She attacked me. Within minutes, sirens filled the air. Police and an ambulance arrived, and I was rushed to the hospital. The doctors worked quickly, ensuring my safety and that of my unborn babies. Later, as I lay in the hospital bed, a police officer came in. Mrs. Emily, can you tell us what happened? I recounted the horrific event, tears streaming down my face. She wanted to buy my baby. Then she hit me. The officer took notes, his expression somber. We'll investigate, Mrs. Emily. Don't worry but I knew it wasn't going to be easy. Sarah had always been cunning. As I lay there, thinking of my babies, I knew one thing for sure. I had to protect them, no matter what. In the sterile white of the hospital room, I cradled my phone, still reeling from the shock. Tom sat beside me, his hand a reassuring presence on mine. Emily, you sure you're okay to talk about this now? Tom's concern was evident in his voice. I nodded. 
I have to, Tom. The police need to know everything. Just as I finished recounting the harrowing ordeal to the officer, my phone buzzed. It was Sarah. How could you accuse me of such a thing, Emily? You know it's not true. Her voice, usually haughty, now dripped with a concocted innocence. I gritted my teeth. You attacked me, Sarah. You tried to hurt my babies. Hurt you? Emily, I'm the victim here. You stole my necklace, remember? I was dumbfounded. What? That's a lie. There were no cameras in the house, Emily. It's your word against mine. The realization hit me like a ton of bricks. She had planned this. I'll drop the charges, Sarah continued, if you retract your statement. Let's just forget this ever happened. The choice was agonizing. Fight and risk everything, or let her get away with it. I looked at Tom, his eyes filled with a silent plea. Fine, Sarah. I'll retract. But this isn't over, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. After the call, I broke down, Tom holding me as I cried. We knew it was a deal with the devil, but our priority was the safety of our unborn children. Weeks turned into months, and our life slowly returned to a semblance of normalcy. Our beautiful twins, a boy and a girl, were born healthy and strong. They became our world, our little miracles. But the shadow of that day lingered. I couldn't bring myself to tell Mom about Sarah's betrayal. She was already frail. This would break her. Instead, I poured my energy into our family and a small business venture Tom and I had been dreaming of. It wasn't much, a little online store, but it was a start, a step towards a better future for us and our children. As Tom and I packed orders one evening, he looked up. Em, we're doing this, for us, for the kids. Sarah can't touch us anymore. I smiled, a mix of determination and hope in my eyes. You're right, this is just the beginning. The years flew by faster than I ever imagined. Our little online store, once just a dream shared between Tom and me, had blossomed into a thriving business. It wasn't just a business. It was a symbol of our resilience, our triumph over adversity. Our twins, Jake and Emma, grew up amidst boxes and labels, their laughter filling our home-turned office. They were our pride, intelligent and compassionate, the very heart of our life. Mom, look, I've streamlined the order processing. It's way more efficient now, Jake beamed, showing me his laptop. And I've been working on our social media strategy. We're going to attract a bigger audience, Emma chimed in, her eyes sparkling with excitement. Their enthusiasm was infectious. Tom and I exchanged a proud glance. They weren't just our kids. They were our partners, our successors. One evening, as we sat around the dinner table, our conversation turned to the past. Remember when we started? Packing orders at midnight? The twins sleeping in their cribs next to us? Tom's voice was thick with nostalgia. I smiled. How could I forget? We've come a long way. It was true. We had gone from a struggling family to a successful, well-known name in the business world. But more than that, we had stayed together, strong and united. As we chatted, I noticed Mom looking at us, a content smile on her face. She had seen it all, the struggles and the triumphs. I was glad we could give her this life, a life of comfort and joy in her golden years. The conversation shifted to Sarah. It had been years since I last spoke to her. Do you ever think about her, Emily? Mom asked gently. I hesitated. Sarah was a chapter I had closed long ago. Sometimes, Mom, but that's in the past now. We have so much to be grateful for. The twins nodded in agreement. They knew the story, the pain and betrayal. But like us, they chose to focus on the present, on the love and success that surrounded us. As we cleared the table, Emma hugged me. Mom, you and Dad are amazing. You built all this from nothing. Jake added, yeah, you guys are our inspiration. Their words warmed my heart. Our journey hadn't been easy, but it was worth every hurdle, every tear. We had built something beautiful, not just a business, but a legacy of love and perseverance. Our business was booming, our family thriving. In contrast, Sarah's life had taken a downward spiral. She inherited a fortune from Richard, but squandered it all. Bad investments, worse friends, and failed relationships left her penniless and alone. One autumn evening, as the leaves painted the ground golden, our peaceful life was disrupted by an unexpected call. It was Mom, her voice trembling. Emily, it's about Sarah. She's in trouble. She's, she's homeless now, struggling with addiction. 
the news hit me like a ton of bricks. Sarah, once living in luxury, now had nothing. Mom, I, I don't know what to say. Emily, she's still your sister. She needs help. I was torn. The pain and betrayal of the past were still fresh in my memory. But looking at Mom's pleading eyes, I knew I couldn't turn my back completely. The next day, Sarah showed up at our doorstep. Her appearance was a stark contrast to the sister I once knew. Her eyes, once haughty, now held a desperate plea. I... I'm sorry, Emily. I was wrong. She stuttered, her voice barely above a whisper. The words I had longed to hear, but they no longer brought me any satisfaction. I can't forget what you did, Sarah. But for Mom's sake, I'll help you. I laid out my conditions. You get treatment, you work to get better. That's the only way I can help you. Sarah nodded, a glimmer of hope in her eyes. Thank you, Emily. I'll do whatever it takes. As she left with the information about a rehab center, Tom put his arm around me. You did the right thing, Em. I sighed. I did it for Mom. For our peace of mind. The days that followed were a mix of emotions. I had extended a helping hand to Sarah, but the bridge between us was long burned. We had our lives, our children and our business to focus on. One evening, as we all gathered in the living room of our home, now more a palace than a house, I looked around at my family. Mom, smiling peacefully. Tom, the rock of our lives, and our children, the embodiment of our love and hard work. We've come a long way, I whispered to Tom. He squeezed my hand, and we'll go even further, together. As the sun set, casting a warm glow over our home, I realized this was our victory. A life well lived, challenges overcome, and a future full of promise. The story of Emily and Sarah has come to an end. What would you have done if you were in Emily's shoes when Sarah asked for help? Would you offer assistance or refuse due to past grievances? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and let's see the diverse perspectives on this complex situation. And hey, if you enjoyed this story and want more, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more intriguing tales. Your support means a lot.